This video will describe the design of a lag compensator. In the previous video, we've seen the design of an ideal integral compensator, which is a PI controller, and we've seen uh, the design of a PI controller and tail placing of Euler's origin. Uh, we've seen that, and uh, actually, when we place the pole at the origin, what happens? The type of a system increases by one, and normally this should allow to reduce a steady state error. But we've seen also if we just do uh, the placement of a pole at the origin, it's not sufficient if we wanted to maintain the transit of a system. So we had to place a zero very close to the origin. So we've discussed that extensively. Now, the issue with uh, an, an idle integral uh, controller is that it will require active integrated circuits, for example, op amps. And this means your controller will control energy and can be quite costly as well to implement. So if you wanted to use any passive elements to uh, implement your compensator, then the if you want the uh, counterpart of the PI controller is a lag compensator. So we do have <coughs> the advantage of a lag compensator is it's not going to involve any active components, but the downside is it will allow you to only reduce your steady state error, but not uh, make it become zero. Like we've seen in the previous examples, if you design a PI controller for uh, some situations, you can even make the error become zero. In this case here, we're going to try to reduce it by some factor. So what's a lag compensator? It's, uh, if you understood how a PI controller works, it's very similar, except that we are not going to place now the pole at the origin itself, but very close to the origin. And of course, we need to have the zero as well. So if you imagine uh, a controller having a pole close to the origin and a zero as well close to the origin, then we get this kind of configuration for your controller, for your lag compensator. And if, uh, later we'll understand why I actually call it a lag compensator. Now you can see here, if you have now this be, uh, before your, your plant, so before if you are using a PI controller, you will increase your type of system by one, and then when you're going to work out your error constant, when you do limit that S test to zero of uh, GS, for example, if it's a step, uh, step input, then the S in the denominator is going to make your KB become infinity, and when you compute the error, you get one infinity, so it becomes zero. In this case, clearly you can see here when you uh, put S to zero in this <coughs> controller here, the uh, the you will get a ratio ZC over PC. So in a way, you are increasing your uh, error constant by a factor ZC over PC. That is what we're going to look at. Okay. So in this case, the chain error constant is going to be your previous error constant. So we call that KV naught, and it's going to be multiplied by this ratio here. We've seen the previous slide when you set S to zero now, you're going to get this ratio Z zero PC. It means uh, now your error constant has been increased by this value. Okay, so if you, of course, increase your error constant by a certain amount, since your steady state error is typically inversely proportional to the error constant, so you expect your error to reduce. Now, bear in mind that when you talk of the error constant uh, KP, so position error constant, so it is one over one plus KP, so it's not exactly inverse proportional, but for the uh, velocity error constant, it's one over KV, and for the acceleration error constant, it is one over KA, so uh, you would expect these two to be directly inverse proportional if you want. <clears throat> In any case, when you increase to a static error constant, introducing the pole and the zero at the origin. Sorry, when you increase, the, uh, when you insert this pole here, close to origin and the zero also close to origin. So you get a ratio here, which is going to increase our constant to expect your static error to reduce. So we'll look at some example. <clears throat> so said, yeah, but be careful that increasing error constant is not always equal to proportionate reduction in state error, simply in the case of KPs one over one plus K. Now, in order to keep the transit response unchanged, we've seen that the compensating pole and zero must be as close to each other as possible. We discussed that elaborately when you were designing the PI controller uh, from the angle perspective. So if they're very close together, the angle contribution of this the pole and the zero are going to nullify each other. So your root locus should pass <coughs> as close as possible to the previous point you're operating at. And from a gain, uh, uh, from a gain point of view, uh, if your vectors, if these two poles, if, if the poles and the zero are very close together, the vectors linking your operating point to this pole and zero are almost the same length, so they cancel out in the calculation for the gain. 
So a uh, very similar comment here, the only way you can have this ratio Z0 PC to be large, why you want it to be large, simply this uh, ratio is deciding by what factor basically you're reducing your error. So you want this ratio ZC or PC to be large, to increase your static error constant, but at the same time, you want it to be as close as possible to each other. For the, for, for the, for the simple reason, you want to maintain your uh, transit response. So these, uh, <coughs> these two conditions are met if you place your uh, positive repair close to origin. The closer the to origin, the better you can meet these two conditions here. So sensor PC should be as high as possible, at the same time, be uh, <coughs> very close to the origin, very close to each other. Okay, so for example, having a pole at minus 0 0.01 and a 0 at minus 0 0.01. So basically here you're saying your compensator, your lag compensator would be S plus 0 0.01 in the numerator over S plus 0 0.001. So in the way it gives a ratio of 10. So you expect your static error, uh, your error constant, your static error constant to, <coughs> to increase by 10. And yet, <coughs> your pole and zero are very close together. Yep. If you consider linking these two points here to your operating point, the length of this vector should be more or less the same. So let's take an example to illustrate the design of a lag compensator. So I'll compensate the following control system so that the steady state error is reduced by 10, while maintaining the transient response as much as possible for damping ratio of 0 0.174. So uh, we know this damping ratio is going to correspond to damping ratio line on the root locus, so you can find your operating point. The first thing you would need to do is calculate the error you're getting at this point in time with, uh, <coughs> with the, the gain that you're getting to give a damping ratio of 1.074. That's the first step. And once you get that steady state error, you can work out a new uh, steady state error that is reduced by 10. And for that, it will correspond to a given uh, uh, even KP, in this case, a KP, if you look at the transfer function here of your plot, is a type zero system. So if you're getting, uh, <clears throat> if you want to reduce your steady state error by 10, it means it is not zero, it is uh, constant. So it means you're talking about KP here. So uh, we've discussed uh, this problem earlier. So uh, it, it, uh, we've worked out this problem earlier and we've we actually calculated the steady state error for operating at a damping ratio of 0 0.174. Uh, the 0 0.108. So if I just go back where actually we saw this example as reference for you. So this example we've uh, taken earlier, <coughs> this was for PI controller. Yes, so uh, <coughs> without any compensation, if you work out your KP, uh, this is what we got earlier. And we found our K to be 164.6. And how do you get that is by finding the uh, cross section between your damping ratio line and your root locus. So you got this point as well as the operating point, in this case, minus 0 0.694 plus J 3.926. When you're designing the PI control member, we've used this operating point to calculate our peak time and setting time, so that when you do compensation, you can cross-check, have you actually maintained your transient response as close as possible? We have to be similar the size here for the lag compensator because we would want to maintain the same transit response as, as much as possible. So once you got your gain here, 164.6, you're going to use that, of course, in your uh, calculation for KP. We got 8.23 for KP, and then you work out your steady state error to use 0 0.108. Okay, so this is where these uh, figures are coming from. You're not going to repeat the calculations. <clears throat> now, uh, the, the question is about reduction the steady state error by 10. So 10 for improvement in the steady state error means new steady state error should be 0 0.0108. So you just divided this by 10. But be careful, this does not correspond to an increase by 10 of the KP. So what I was mentioning before is so always a proportionate increase in, those steady state, in your uh, static error constant. In this case, for KP especially, it's going to uh, not be uh, <coughs> uh, inverse portion in that case. So uh, from this, a uh, new value for your uh, steady state error, 0 0.108. So you can work out a new value for uh, your KP because your steady state error is one, one plus KP, which should be equal to 0 0.108. If you do that, you get a new value for KP of 91.59. It's not equal to 80.23, like I mentioned. Therefore, now <clears throat> it means you need to increase your error constant from 91.59 
uh, from 8.23 to 91.59, so you can find here get a ratio. So this is going to be the ratio of your 0 to 4. So it's not going to 10 again. Yeah, so you find your uh, new value for KP, and then the ratio by which you have to increase is 91.59 divided by 8.23. And then it means your ZC over PC should be equal to 11.13 by dividing the, uh, the new value of KP and the old value. Now, once you found this ratio, you can arbitrarily set uh, PC and ZC. So once you set, let's say you set your PC at 0 0.01, so it is at minus 0 0.01, of course. So from that here, we know ZC or PC should be 11.13. You work out your ZC to be 11.13 times this PC, that's 0 0.111. So this is your lag compensator. Of course, your K here would again be found by finding the cross section of this new root locus here where you introduce this 0. Uh, and the pole, and find the cross section of the Debbie ratio line and your root locus. So this is what's done here. And now we get a value of 158.1. And <clears throat> you can find again, you have your uh, operating point, which can be used to work out your uh, peak time and settling time as done earlier, and you can compare. Okay, so this table here uh, summarizes what we've just done. So uh, with the uncompensated system, our gain was 164.6, now it's 158.1. If you look at uh, the dominant pulse here, this is a cross-section of your damping ratio line with your root locus. So it was minus 0 0.694, now it's minus 0 0.678. So this figure here is going to lead your setting time. And, and, and your uh, imaginary part is 3.9 six before compensation now it's 3.836 so you expect it to have more or less same setting time but you need to simulate that you said earlier because you're making the second order approximation okay you can see here the third pole is quite far to the left so the further this third pole or this third pole is to the left the more accurate our second order approximation is going to be and this is of course our kp which we worked out to obtain the reaction in your uh, the reduction to get the reduction in your static error. So now, if you plot the uh, response, you can see uh, before uh, compensation you had an error here of 0 0.108, and with compensation now you can see error has reduced. It's not zero now, but it has reduced. Definitely, you're closing to final value. When you look at the transient part here, <clears throat> it's very similar in terms of peak time. Although your, uh, with uh, your compensation, your overshoot has increased a little bit because we are doing approximation as usual. So we don't expect it to be exactly the same overshoot, but it is, uh, it's up to you to decide if it's acceptable or not. You can see the trajectory is very similar in terms of settling time and peak time, but overshoot has increased a little bit. So you can also assess now, we've chosen uh, this particular value. The one we've just chosen was uh, a pole at minus 0 0.01. So this is what you've just done. You're going to, of course, bring it close to the origin and then assess what are you getting. Yeah. So it's always a question of assessing. It's not just one answer uh, for the lack compensation, but you need to always assess the compensator you are proposing, what implications having on your transit and on your steady state error. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the section on lag compensator, it was short section, which is more or less what, very similar to a PI controller, like you say, but different, uh, dip, the main difference is that your pole that you're placing is not at the origin, but it's very close to origin, and of course you need to put a zero as well to maintain the transit response. Now one comment on why you call it a lag compensator to end, uh, to end this session here, so uh, if we just look at this, uh, <coughs> this particular, uh, placement of your pole on the complex plane. So this is your lag compensator. We are placing a pole first and then a zero. And if we go now on this root locus here, if you imagine linking these two, uh, uh, this, uh, this pole and the zero to your operating point. Yeah, so you get two vectors with two angles. In this case here, since they're very close together, you expect to get, uh, you expect to get, of course, uh, <coughs> Almost the same angle, but definitely the angles, the angle contribution of a pole and a zero are not the same. If they were the same, they would cancel out straight. So they are not actually uh, exactly the same. They are very close together, but not equal. Yeah. So if we go back to this diagram here and just imagine you have your operating point somewhere here and you're linking this to pole to it 
and the zero, despite these two angles formed by these two vectors to be very close together, still you expect the angle created by the pole here to be greater than the angle created by zero. Because if your point is somewhere here, you're linking it to this pole and you're linking it to the zero. So imagine now you calculate the angle created by this vector is this one and the angle created by this one, the zero is here. So if you take now the sum of these two angles only, since a pole is going to contribute a zero, a zero angle away because the denominator of a transfer function, and your zero is going to contribute a positive angle because the numerator of a transfer function. If you take a sum of these two angles, even if they are very close together, still you expect this overall value to be negative. Yeah, to be negative again because angle associated with a vector from the pole is going to give uh, a larger angle as compared to this one. So it's because angle is negative, but you cause a lag compensator. It's going to cause a lag in your face overall. Okay, so I end this video here. Uh, the next video is going to look at PD controller. So it's going to be a, a bit longer video where we're going to now tackle the transient part of your uh, system. If you want to change the transient, that happens with a step, with a setting time, or the peak time, or the overshoot, or the natural frequency. So you can modify all this by actually moving. Uh, from your pointing point to other points, and for that we need to consider the, the PD and the lead compensator. Okay, thank you for uh, watching this video. So I'm going to send out the video soon. Thank you. <clears throat>